Roundtable time now. George Will is off today. Glad to have Cokie Roberts here. Also, Dan Senor, senior advisor of the Romney campaign. Steve Ratner, who ran the auto bailout for President Obama at the Treasury Department. And two congressmen, Congressman Tom Cole of Oklahoma, also a member of the Republican leadership, and Keith Ellison, Democrat of Minnesota, chair of the Progressive Caucus uh, in the House. Let's talk about what we just heard from Tim Geithner. Koch. He says they're making progress. I think it's fair to say he's about the only one in Washington who thinks so this week. Well, Congressman Cole does. I, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I want to hear I that then, right? In the <laughs> but um, uh, it, it hasn't been a very... Um, encouraging week for people who think that uh, the fiscal cliff is not something we want to go over. And uh, and I think that the president's proposal that was put on the table was something that the Republicans were not going to accept, even close to accept. Uh, so it it had the, the air of um, a bazaar, you know, bargaining in a bazaar. Put, put a really high price out there so that when you start the negotiating, uh, you feel like the better about is, it. The question is, when will the real negotiating begin? Well, so so, so, so Congressman Cole, you, you actually think there was progress there, even though I think no. you thought. <laughs> I, I want to thank the president, Tim Geithner, for reuniting and re-energizing the Republican caucus because <laughs> that offer, they must think John Boehner is Santa Claus because that's a Christmas wish list, not a real proposal. Uh, and in that sense, I think we took a little step back at the end of the week. Now, at the end of the day, do I think we'll arrive at a deal? Yeah, I actually do. But I think it's a lot of tough negotiation ahead of time. But you heard Secretary Geithner right there, and then I want to get Congressman Ellison in on this as well. He says it is now up to the Republicans to come forward with a new proposal. They're not going to get, they're not going to come forward with anything new right now. Well, I don't uh, know that that, there's a little bit of chicken going on here in terms of gamesmanship. The reality is all these tax rates end at the end of the year. Uh, and so uh, we're going to have a lot of discussion. I don't think we need to put a formal proposal out on the table. The, the speaker's already said revenue's on the table. He's got a, an idea about how to get there uh, in terms of not raising rates, but finding it in other ways through tax code reform. I think that makes a lot of sense, and that's a doable thing. But uh, beyond that, you know, we'll wait and see how the negotiations go. What we heard from Secretary Geithner, Congressman Ellison, is that Social Security for now is off the table in these negotiations, but talking about significant cuts in Medicare, can your caucus accept those? Well, it depends on whether they're going to cut benefits to, to people. I was meeting with seniors in my district just yesterday, and uh, they're very worried. I mean, we have seniors who are already paying more than they can afford for, for medications, already worried about that. I'm not going to go to those people and tell them that they're going to do less while we're not going to raise taxes on the top 2 percent. That's just ridiculous. And, um, you know, I think we're going to, I think Tom's right. We probably will end up with some kind of a deal, but it's not going to be on the backs of the most vulnerable people in our country. And I think that people at the top so, of the income so, scale. So you will agree that something is going to happen, Dan Senor. That, that um, conflicts, at least, with a lot of the reporting I had on, on Capitol Hill this week, where you saw both Repu uh, significant numbers of Republicans and Democrats more willing to accept the idea of going over the cliff, at least for a few days. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that is one Republican uh, House member said to me, good, good lesson in negotiating is don't make your opening offer one of humiliation, which is what Republicans felt the White House had put forth in the last couple days. Uh, I, I think there is a sense now, Republicans I've spoken to, particularly in the leadership, have said, look, if we go over the cliff, we're going to get blamed. Right. Republicans no are going to get blamed. No question about right. that. There's, the view is shifting a little bit now, where there is a sense that if President Obama goes into his second term and poisons the environment so much that he can't get a deal and we, we go over the cliff, it is going to be so toxic for year two, year three, year four. And he, you know, Republicans have some leverage, too, that the president has to be worried about his legacy and how he's going to govern through his second term. And even though Republicans might get blamed, it, this whole idea that the president's bring the country together is something he wasn't able to do in his first term. If he can't do it in his second term, it could be very problematic. That is something the Democrats have to be wary of, isn't it? I don't, yeah, but I don't see it that way at all. Look, there, the president has made a proposal. It may not be what everybody likes. When you go out to sell your house, you don't put on the, the price on it that you're actually willing to sell it on. You start at a place and you negotiate. I don't think it was an outrageous proposal. Uh, it's consistent with everything he said before. But it's a proposal. It's a real proposal. The Republicans have put no proposal on the table, nothing, not a zip. And so if we go over the cliff, it is not at all clear to me that the American people are going to blame the president as opposed to a party that has put nothing on the know, table. This business of, of the blame um, is, is really dispiriting because the, the idea of, you know, who's going to get the blame instead of figuring out how to keep it from happening uh, is, is exactly what drives voters nuts. They might have to be aware of who's going to get the blame before they come, they come <laughs> to a deal. One proposal that came this week was from you, Congressman Cole, and it, it, it caused some consternation uh, in Republican ranks from the House Speaker. You're saying accept part of the president's proposal. Pass right now uh, an extension of the tax cuts for 98 percent of Americans and then fight over the rest uh, later. I want to show what Speaker Boehner had to say about that. 
Well, I told uh, Tom earlier in our conference meeting that I disagreed with it. You're not going to grow the economy if you raise tax rates on the top, on the top two rates. It'll hurt small businesses. It'll hurt our economy. It's why uh, this is not the right approach. I, I saw he disagreed, but I see other Republicans coming forward, including Bill Crystal, the weekly senator, think you have a good idea. He me a wonderful friend. Yes, he <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing personal. Yeah, absolutely not. But, yeah, it, actually, it really is. Look, this is a, a, a... I actually do believe that we should take things where we agree with the president, and we do agree on this, and take them off the table one at a time. And this would actually, I think, strengthen our position in the course of negotiation, because so it loses just to where the president has not been very specific. Spending restraints, entitlement reforms. Uh, and it leaves us free to still fight to keep rates constant uh, and try to reach revenue in another way, which the speakers talked about. But at the end of the day, again, these rates hit every single American at the end of the month. It's yeah, not as I if mean, Congress, you know, has to do something to keep that from happening. It, it actually does have to do something to prevent us from do you having feel this talk. Like, this I think is we should start a politically doing that. very smart move. I mean, you know, we're talking nine. 90... Actually, you're helping him in his caucus right now, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now, if Dan will say that. Yeah, we'll <laughs> But 98% of Americans then know that their taxes are not going to go up in January. Uh, their payroll taxes might, but uh, that their income taxes are not. And that is, that is huge. And, and the truth is, from what I'm hearing, the top 2% better start making financial plans. Well, there's no question about that. But why, what's wrong with this proposal? <laughs> Uh, look, I think there are uh, parts of the proposal that are, are, shall we say, reasonable. How about that? Reasonable. I'll take it. Uh, but I, I think the, the, the bigger problem here is if the president is sticking to this position, at least for the time being, that he outlined last week, it would be the equivalent of Republicans not putting forward something like Tom put forward. It would be the equivalent of the Republicans saying, we want the Ryan budget, we want marginal tax rates cut 20 percent across the board. I mean, some very extreme position. So it's hard to have sort of a reasonable response to what the president put, put forward this week. And I'll tell you, Steve, I think he no, is, let, let me just, I think he has dug in. He spent more time on the phone this week, from what I understand, with Steve Israel, the chairman of the Democrats' campaign arm, than he did with, with John Boehner. He's spending time meeting with people like Richard Trumka and MoveOn.org. You tell me what he's telling mm -hmm. those hard left groups about his position and how he can walk back to something more reasonable he, that someone like Tom is for, he, given what he's saying he, to these he, hard left he groups. He also met with a, quite a number of business leaders, a lot of CEOs, a lot of Republicans this week. He's trying to do something different than he's done before, which is take his message outside of the Beltway, outside of Capitol Hill, and try to bring it to the people. And I'm totally in favor of that. But look, in the negotiations a year and almost a half ago, Speaker Boehner was reported to have offered $800 billion of revenue. The president has asked for $1.6 trillion of revenue. There's a bid. There's an ask. If the Republicans want to get a deal done, let's sit down and try and, to find and let me bring that. Let me bring that to Congressman Ellison, because we started to see the beginnings of a counteroffer this weekend from Senator Mitch McConnell, Republicans. He told the Wall Street Journal he offered three things. He said we need to see higher Medicare premiums paid by the wealthier, number one. He said he's a gradual uh, increase in the eligibility age for Medicare and some adjustment to the Social Security COLA. I believe those are all non-starters to you in the Progressive Caucus. Right. Those would be a problem because uh, raising rates and, and increasing eligibility age uh, is going to hurt uh, people uh, at, across income scales, particularly low-income seniors and people like that. So that, that wouldn't work for the us. The president's been open to some of that before. Well, you know, that here's the deal. The, the people of the United States believe that Medicare is an important program. They don't want to see beneficiaries cut. Now, if we can find cuts that don't, result in cuts to beneficiaries. That's, that's one thing. But we're not going to, after having seen the president uh, win this election, we, we won the White House, turn right around and, and undermine the people who, who helped put us there. I mean, but it's... You no, know, it is interesting. This, the older voters did vote Republican. And uh, Medicare was out there. I mean, and, Paul and it was Ryan, on the budget. Budget. It was on Paul the ballot. Ryan budget was well, there, not, not, and uh, and older voters went it's for. Not overstate the president's mandate Romney. here either. Remember, he won, but he won with fewer votes and a lower percentage than he got last time. The Republican performance was better than it was four years ago. And the reality is, nobody can look at this budget and think that if you don't reform entitlements, you can balance it. You could give the president every tax increase he's asked right. for, you'd still be in the hole. But it's a matter yeah. of where do you balance it? No. Do you balance it on the on the backs of the people who can least afford it, or people who have been do doing pretty well? I don't balance it on years. the backs of the but least you... supported. But to, to get a deal, we have a divided government. The president won. We can argue about whether it's a mandate. The Republicans control the House. They have a blocking position in the Senate. There's going to have to be compromise. Right. We have $16 trillion of debt. We have a trillion-dollar-a-year deficit. 
You're not going to solve all that with tax increases. You're not going to solve all that with cutting discretionary programs. We have to fix the entitlement programs. There is no real choice about that. No, we can talk about how we do it. Well, you got to get specific, about, though, Steve, because when you start talking about fixing the entitlement program, and we're clear, Social Security is off the table. What no, do you we're not mean? Clear. We're not, no, no, what, 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 no. No, what Secretary year. Geithner said is on a separate process, but it's going to have to get it's fixed. It's off the table in these, in these we're negotiations. We're talking about between now and 30, 30 days from now. It's also a presidential you know. responsibility. Look, if, if only Nixon can go to China, only Obama can fix entitlements. Right. I mean, this is preeminently where a president has to lead and has to be specific. You can't expect the Republicans to lead on an area that he's dominant in politically. Oh. But here's a, here's an entitlement idea. Here's an, a, a way to help uh, support uh, Medicare. Let Medicare Part D negotiate drug prices. That'll right, save us true. 157 sure. this, this billion dollars. Keith, Keith and Steve here. This is to me the most much more interesting debate than Tom and Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because because I think the president. Has, has done exactly what he's done in the past in this negotiating. He's not sitting it down grinding out with John Boehner. He's out giving speeches, no. rallying his base, getting Obama for America no, very no, organized, no, no, meeting no, with groups no. like MoveOn.org. Oh, on, how on. will he be able You're to... Americans. Right, so how will he be able to <laughs> well, walk back Dan's. from the position he's wanna, taken? Will, your, get, will the base of your conference feel like he caved? Will they say the president just won this historic re-election? How can he walk back now just after he's won re-election from this position he's taken over the last week. Because Is he somewhat boxed in? Well, I, you know, I think that he's got the wind at his back. The American people want him to stand up for these essential programs. Now, look, American people do want to see uh, cost containment, when it, but we can do that in ways that doesn't result in cuts to beneficiaries. I think that's... So we've got two intra-party battles going on. We're going to have to take a break. <laughs>